I'm doing it. Yay. Okay. So welcome everybody to addressing loneliness. So this is for me, I see this just as a town hall for our community to come together. And this sort of transpired from a conversation that we put in the Facebook Messenger that just asked a really simple question, which was, what would you like us to focus on this year? Jodie and I were having a meeting and talking about what content to put in the newsletter. And a few women came back around the loneliness issue. And then we had, a few of us had lunch together in New South Wales. And I brought the topic up in the group and, um, a few, there was a few of the women who shared their lived experience of loneliness. And, you know, I really thought that it'd be great for us to have a conversation. So I'm going to start off by acknowledging the traditional custodians of country. So for me, um, I'm on Gadigal land. So I'm super, super grateful and honored to be on this beautiful land. And I want to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and respect all um, elders and Aboriginal people here today. So I'm going to go through this housekeeping stuff really quickly because the focus really is about everybody, um, especially the people with lived experience. So if you haven't done so yet, add your state, town or city next to your name. If you want to add LE for lived experience of loneliness, so that, so that way I'll come to you. If you don't want to do that, before we get to that part, you can just put your hand up. As I said, the focus is on the people with lived experience in terms of sharing first. And then I know there are a few professionals who work in the field and then they can add their comments as well. Okay, I can hear there's a couple of um, people still unmuted. If you can mute yourself, that would be really wonderful. Okay, so we'll just, just a few housekeeping and stuff around, be respectful of everyone's lived experience. So we don't want to give advice. We don't want to say should. We don't want to say tell people what they could be doing differently. This is not the forum for it. This is a forum really just for us to, to listen and hear what the issue, um, what the people with lived ex um, loan, experience of loneliness are experiencing, what, it, what that feels like for them. And then we're gonna explore if there's some of the things that we can start to do to um, change that, okay? So there will be a timer to keep the flow. Please wind up your thoughts when the timer sounds. So you don't have to finish on that dot, just wind the thoughts up so that you no, know, it's coherent. Okay, so this, the session will be recorded. It'll be used as a resource. We will share it with everyone who registered as well. If you don't you know, want anything you say to be used, um, please let us know. We can't take it out of the shared, but we can certainly make sure it doesn't go beyond what's shared here um, if you feel like you don't want it out there, okay? If you don't want your image to be used as well, please turn your camera off from this point on. Jody will do a few screenshots so we can use for our newsletter. Okay. So our aim today is this is purely an invitation to begin the conversation, which I don't assume for a moment that we're going to solve anything here today. It's really about having the conversation. Okay. And I always like to say we cannot change anything we don't acknowledge. So if you're here and you're acknowledging um, your experience of loneliness, I really commend you. And um, a lot of it takes a lot of courage to do that, you know. Um, so I really appreciate you being coming here and and sharing this with us. So the aim today also is to reduce the stigma and shame associated with loneliness just by talking about it the same way about talking about aging. This journey about talking about aging and menopause started six years ago with Silver Sirens. So we're just continuing that, reducing stigma, reducing shame. Okay, so we're here to listen to women with lived experience and we're here to share some ideas, some tools and some resources. And we're here ultimately as another opportunity to connect. And the things that we won't be doing as we're telling anyone what to um, what or how to feel won't be imagining that we have the answers or offer advice. And we don't believe that we can solve this complex issue in one conversation. And we do not assume the silver sirens is an authority on the matter. So I just want to start off with a definition, just one definition of loneliness. There's lots of definitions, but this one definition of loneliness is that it is, it is a feeling. And like all feelings, it is trying to tell us something. So when I work in therapy, people can get overwhelmed with their feelings, but if they stop and observe that a feeling is there as an indicator, our body's trying to tell us something. And loneliness is trying to tell us that we're not feeling meaningfully connected with enough, with the people around us. So it's not about quantity. It's about um, 
the void of that meaningful connection. Okay, so it's trying to make, motivate us to do something different. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to have lots of people to hang out with. It's about the meaningful and feeling understood and supported. And it's important to know that loneliness is not always the same as being alone. Some people can have little contact with others and not feel lonely at all. And some people can have many um, people around them. I don't know, for me, one of my loneliest time was um, having a party with a room full of people that I'd invited, yet I felt disconnected. Okay, so those most at risk of loneliness are people that have had major life changes, losing a partner to death, divorce, separation. Um, those who are experiencing empty nest. Those were single women like myself who've never married, never had children. Those are a big group. That's about a third of people actually live alone. So people that live alone as well. But certainly those with physical and mental disability, those with chronic illness, those have relocated, those that live alone, and obviously our elders, some of our elders. Okay, so just to distinguish between isolation and, and versus loneliness, and then we'll come around to bringing you in. So again, just start making that distinction, loneliness and isolation are different, you know, but they are related. So loneliness is that distressing feeling of being alone and separated where social isolation is a lack of social contacts and having few people to interact with on a regular basis. So we can live alone and not feel lonely or socially isolated and you can feel lonely while being with other people. So older adults are at risk, are higher at risk of social isolation and loneliness due to changes in health, social connection that can come with um, growing older, hearing impairments, vision impairments, memory loss, disability, trouble getting around and or loss of family and friends. Okay, so that just gives us a little bit of a background around how, how we're defining loneliness. And I know that's a limited, so I'm happy for everyone else to share how they would um, identify or, or define loneliness. Okay, so at this stage, I just would like to invite anyone with a lived experience of loneliness to share. I'm gonna just close this for a second so we can see each other. And um, so Rina's in, okay, great. Fantastic. Okay, is that Diane Pease? Are you trying to unmute yourself? No, okay. No, it was me trying to rename myself. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so would anyone like to share? I will, seeing I yeah, started the conversation, Faith. <laughs> yes, brilliant, thank you. Let me just put the timer on. Give me a second. I don't know where it's gone to. At... Okay, on. Okay, over to you. I think it uh, all started for me, and it was at the end of my um, second marriage and living alone. Um, yeah, I went through very deep loneliness. Um, there were many a times where I'd be sitting on the foreshore um, where near my home and just watching family and friends gathering together and, and just not having anybody there to reach out to. Um, and I do feel that quite deeply. And But what I've come to realise is um, it is it's about having, the, it's about belonging. To, for me, it's about belonging to something that where I have the same connection as in that deep connection that um, because, yes, you can be surrounded by your family, your friends and everyone else, but if you don't have that deep connection, then you can definitely feel quite lonely. Um, Friday afternoons are always a big one for me, and I share that because I guess it was because that comes back to my childhood. <clears throat> Taken away as a uh, three-year-old little child and put in foster care and institutions, and on a Friday afternoon it was your mum and dad might come and pick you up this afternoon and they're not turning up. So still dealing with that. Um, yeah. I can't hear you, Faith. You're muted. <laughs> I was saying you still have a bit of time. Yes. So um, it, it's about dealing with it. Um, and I've read a lot of books about it. Um, I've connected with um, Simone Hing. I don't know if anybody knows of Simone Hing. She's just produced Let's Talk About Loneliness. Fantastic mm. book. And it has actually helped me understand that 
there is that loneliness, there is lonely, and there is also about not belonging as well. So, yeah, thank you for listening, ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're just going to keep going. And um, what we'll then do, we'll, we'll come around. If we haven't got many people, we'll come around to Sharon and maybe we'll ask Sharon some questions on, the, on ways that we can help. Okay, so really appreciate you kicking that off for us, Sharon. Okay, who would like to go next? I see everyone. I'll go next, Faith. Yeah, go for it, Anna. Okay. Um, I've Okay, so I'm married and... I've never married, I've never had children. I'm on the other side of menopause. Um, and I all of my adult life I have I've felt alone or lonely. Not just alone, because I've at different times I've 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 worked with or lived with lots of people. But even then, like you were saying about the party, I felt alone in that and and i and i i would say it's my greatest fear now that the next 30 years i'm going to have this loneliness it feels like it's ch it chokes me yeah mm. and i think it is re it's related to having been the outsider like always seeing myself as an outsider and that was a really good point about the sense of if you have if you nurture belonging, that's a way to overcome loneliness. Mm -hmm. But anytime I'm not nurturing belonging, I I spiral into um, a situation of feeling loneliness and overwhelm. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's my share. <laughs> Mm. Thank you, Anna. Really Thank you. Okay. Cancel. So who would like to go next? Um, yeah, go down. This time I will go next. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a really I was really interested when I saw you um put out the um message that you are holding this. I've um I, I live alone now. Um, I was married and 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 I have a thirty three year old son. My husband, well, I divorced him first and then he died, so <laughs> I'm both divorced and widowed. Um, and we led a very active social life. Um, sometimes I felt very lonely in that marriage. Interestingly, even though there were always a million people around. Um, but what I find now is that I'm ha I'm happy living alone. Um, and I have lovely connections to friends and family, which is really important. Um, but I guess th there are times, and I've felt particularly over Christmas and New Year, I think, um, there are times when you just miss having, it's, it's more that I miss sort of intimacy. Um, mm. And I don't mean in, in a physical form. I mean that, and just that, you know, hey, what do you think about this? You know, or I'm just feeling like this, you know, that really sort of, not organised, um, you know, just, you know, having someone there. You know, my dog is not good enough. <laughs> I talk to him, but, you know, but he doesn't give me, he doesn't answer the questions I ask him. Um, so I think I've been finding that, um, that that has arisen for me quite a bit recently. Um, I sort of have a really lovely circle of friends, both here in Canberra and, of, and friends in Sydney, and people I've known a long time. Um, and I'm, I have a close family, but I do, living alone, I do still miss, I miss having someone just kind of being there when I feel like bouncing something off someone. And I do feel lonely because of that. I think, you you know, you do, you miss that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I miss that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me just cancel that. Thank you. Okay, that one's gone. Okay, who would like to go next? So we've got Cheryl. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks, Faith. Um, I was curious about um, this whole topic when you put it up, so I thought I'd jo join along. In, in some ways it's quite appropriately timed for me. My next stage will be retirement, 
and I'm actually reflecting now in terms of how I want that to look like. I'm married. I'm childless. Uh, my family network is very small. Um, I've had five very significant friends die over a number of years. Um, and in reality, my social circle is very small. And going into retirement, I'm actually thinking about what connections can I make with an array of interests as a way of finding my tribe. Um, and I don't know what that really looks like. I'm about, I've am about. i made a deal with myself that I will try maybe two interests this year just to chunk it down in a manageable way because I am still working, just to help to start experience um, what my retirement may look like and relationships and connections is going to be very important in that. Um, I've just gone through my first Christmas where it was my husband and I on our own for Christmas. So in terms of family, it was living in my face a bit in terms of we've always relied on that to some degree. And by that, I mean my mother-in-law or my sister who I'm not very close to. And um, I'm thinking we, we did it as well as what we could because we were both, it was short notice how it was going to be. We did it as well as we could. And it's given me an opportunity to reflect on okay, how do I get myself connected to where I feel like I belong? So that's why I call it my tribe. And I don't feel like an outsider because at the moment, I guess in my community, I am. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, who was that? Okay, so we got Carrie. Would you like to go next? Hi, I feel a bit um, of a fraud because loneliness is new to me. Mm. Hi, Faith. <laughs> um, uh, 2019, I went through 18 months of chemo. I lost my best girlfriend, my lifelong friend. 2020 was COVID. 2021, I lost my dad, my dog. Six months later, my mum. Six months later after that, my boyfriend. So um, I do have a daughter. She lives at the other end of Sydney. Um, and I'm just trying to be brave and step out of my comfort zone and go out to people. And I had a very good friend that um, just suggested, that, you know, to have a plan. So I've gone back to work and that's where I get a lot of social and connection with people. Um, I'm just getting used to living by myself and because I was my parents carers and anyway yeah so I'm just getting used to living by myself which I am that's becoming okay I get on my pushy and go for a swim most days so I'm very blessed and where I live um, and I have a few single girlfriends it's not always the easiest when you go with couples I've got lots of well, a few good girlfriends who are married, but always with couples. Um, yeah, I just find that reconnecting with my single friends a little bit more and working helps me. So that's about it. But mm -hmm. uh, really interested to just connect with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Okay, beautiful. Is there anyone else with lived experience? Is that everyone? It looks like there is, okay. So I guess my next round of questions really is, um, what can we do? You know, if you had the ideal situation of bringing awareness you know, to our community about loneliness, what would you like to see us do? So I'm going to start with you, Sharon, because you raised the question. <laughs> um, I guess joining um, the group has been, uh, and thanks, Jody. it's been so, you know, just great just to be able to reach out. And that's exactly what I do. Um, and know that I'm in the right place and know that I, I can reach out to others that have like, had the same experience or not be afraid to. I'm not afraid to reach out to people 
and I'm not afraid to, to speak up and, and say when I am feeling like I am. Um, and it's it's about reaching out and finding that community, like my tribe. Like Cheryl said, you know, it, it's time for me to find my tribe because, um, and yeah, I feel that quite strongly with being a part of the Silver Sirens. I think, wow, this really connects with me and it's something that I want to really step into. So I'm happy, glad to be here. And um, yeah, I look forward to the, the journey of connecting with more of you and getting to know you and and being able to share um, in, in presence of each other when we can will be just lovely. And I think that makes a difference too, because yes, we can do this over web, which is great, and how fortunate we are to have Zoom, but to be able to connect in person is also a lovely way to, um, to help as well. Thank you, appreciate it. It's nice thank to be you. here. <laughs> okay, thank you. So um, we've, we're definitely working on some additional things we can do in the background. So I'll talk about some of those um, mm -hmm. later. And, but, and obviously, you know, you being in Perth, you and Jody. I know you and Jody have caught up, and mm -hmm. and um, I know that Jody's organised a lunch. So there's there's more things that we we can do, and we, but we'll go through those in a moment. Okay, so thank you. So much. Okay, what about you, Anna? What could we do? What would you like us to know that may help? Okay, the I think I think having a plan, like I heard different people talk about like being act actively trying to connect with the tribe, with the, with different tribes. So for me it's more yeah, for me it would be a plan like a um Maybe it's like a drop, a, a weekly drop in. Like, I don't know. I'm not really sure, but I, I, I see the plan as the central scaffolding to to moving beyond that loneliness. So what I'm hearing is a personal plan for yourself, and I guess I was really yeah. to what we could do as a community, because Anna, you've been part of Civil Science from the beginning. So I just wondered yeah. if, if you observed if there's anything that we could do as a community to really yeah, help. I, 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 the book club is a really great idea. Um, like, so having a drop in kind of a weekly event, maybe that we drop in on, or, you know, in, in lots of ways, Silver Sirens is that in action. It's like connecting rather than staying in your, staying in my loneliness. It's like an, an affirmative action. So, um, yeah, that maybe um, going, like I think I came last year to a yoga group that mm -hmm. you had. Like, so doing things like that. Or just put even folding loneliness into the language of of a, of being a, a silver siren that you go oh, okay loneliness is one pimple on this yeah. trip. That's great. Thank you so much. And it's, I'm glad you said that because um, we're yes. just Jody and I are just working on um a statement, our loneliness statement. You know, like we've got our guiding principles. We're just working on one that covers loneliness, so that will be part of our one of our pillars that we address. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for that. So you're saying about the drop-in events, um, the ones that you're talking about are the ones online. So I just don't want to confuse the other women. So you're talking yeah. about dropping in yeah. on the spiritual sanctuary, the yoga ones you've come into and the book club and a few other ones. Yeah, they're the, they're the ones who, that, um, like, they they switch the, they switch the, um, the button really quickly. Like, so, like, if I'm in a state of loneliness, knowing that, e.g., there's an a, a, a talk today about loneliness, and I suppose because loneliness has gone, it it sits there like an elephant in the room, but it does. People don't touch on it very often, mm -hmm. and I think social media, like really breaking it down and going, oh, social media contributes to it. Um, having a plan for for Christmas events, like you, some someone had said that earlier. Like just being aware, like it, yeah, being aware of it, 
and really looking at it. So that's what I would say. Yeah. So I'm hearing like pre-planning for maybe those kind of problematic sort of times, mm -hmm. like pre-planning, okay, or knowing the outcomes on your calendar yeah. online. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What about you, Diana? Um, well, I found Silver Sirens because, well, I I was interested in whoever it was who's doing a plan for when they retire. Um, that was a big that was a big thing for me too because I worked I worked long hours for a long time. Um, it's interesting that now I've retired that it's not those old work colleagues, many many of whom have also retired that have become my friends. <laughs> um, but um, I have joined a number of groups like, not not like this one. Um, this one attracted me because I love to be part of groups and find like-minded women, um, women of a certain age <laughs> um, who share experiences and, and are open and willing to talk about them. So um, I guess that's why I joined Silver Sirens. Um, for me, I mean, I think the thing for me is, you know, th that, as I said, I've got a beautiful group of friends. They're not a huge number of friends, but really beautiful. My family in Canberra, I've got my biological family in Sydney, and I've got a group of girlfriends that I went to university with 45 years ago. And there are five of us, and we're all still really good friends. So I, I have those good friends. For me, it's more the, um, as I said, it's more that sort of like spontaneous stuff. Now, unless I was prepared to start dating, and I <laughs> there's that kind of balance, you know, do I miss that stuff so much that I'd let someone else into my life? I don't know. I've been alone. My husband died in 2016. So I've been alone for quite a long Oh, I've been, in fact, I've been living alone since 2013. Oh, yeah, mainly. So I don't know. I don't I don't know that there's anything Silver Sirens can do. To, it was just interesting that, um, you know, I was just, when I saw this, I was thinking about it um, before coming in, that that's, that's the lonely. I, do I, I mean, I, you do feel lonely when you're alone, but I don't mind being alone. But I do plan things and I do lots of activities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I learn French, um, and I've come to this group, and um, I go to a painting class, um, and I've made friends there as well. So um, I'm not sure that Silver Sirens can do much for my bits of loneliness because it's about closeness. Mm -hmm. And that's also me as well, because maybe I'm not very good at being close. So, yeah, I might be, I may be need a therapist. <laughs> Thanks. There's a few in the room. <laughs> but, but I really hear that though, because I know, you know, for me, it feels like when I'm in between relationships, is what I miss most is having that one person who's that my one person who is tracking my day, who knows what, what I can check in with. And like you said, when you're feeling spontaneous, that's my person that I'm going to go off and do that with. Yeah, yeah. And I guess I haven't actually missed, I haven't been ready for that until now. Mm. So maybe the fact that I'm missing that now means I'm kind of getting to a point in my life where I'm almost ready to let that happen again. Yeah. When we talked about the Which would be a triumph. Yeah. <laughs> and when we talked about the definition, it talked about it being a motivator to take an action. So maybe the action is around looking for looking at dating for you. Maybe it's Yeah, fine. well, in fact, so maybe Silver Sirens could run exactly how not to be anxious dating about workshop. living out there again. <laughs> we'll find someone who can run a dating workshop. Absolutely. Put that on our list of things to do. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. So we're going to go to Cheryl, then to Carrie, and then I am going to bring it back to everyone else and we just see how we can offer um, verbal support without advice okay so if you're thinking about you know if you're not got a lived experience i'm going to pull you in as well okay so just thinking about how can we offer support to our beautiful sisters um sans advice okay so let's go to cheryl next uh faith um yeah it's a really good question so um someone raised intimacy and having lost five really good friends um after they've died the connections of intimacy and that knowledge of knowing me without me having to set that up, I'm not sure how you replicate that. Um, so I don't know that that's an ask that I believe so, uh, Silver Sirens can put together. Um, so that's, 
I'll car park that, but that's a part of um, loneliness for me. And from a silver siren's point of view, I really love that you're unique and special and you are looking at um, conversation around topics that occur and loneliness is obviously one of those. So in terms of what maybe Silver Sirens can do is maybe a workshop or information around strategies that can help each of us because each lady that's here today, we've each just with those that have shared, we've got our own journeys with that and at different times there might be different pockets of needs that we have. So maybe the strategy developing information or a map around some strategies could be useful yeah. that's brilliant thank you mm. and i'm going to go on to that because we've been brainstorming and we've got some we've got some ideas so <laughs> we're going to for the whole of february we're going to be looking at resources etc okay. in our newsletters we're going to be focused on that so mm -hmm. thank you okay so let's do carrie What was the question? What I what I'm, we could do as a community to to help with loneliness. I don't know. I think as Cheryl said, it's um when you have long term people in your life and they leave, it's the intimacy. How do you achieve that with new friends? Um I think it's just the constant, the emails that you send out, the interesting, the blogs um, for us to take a step forward and be involved in what you were doing. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I know I, my sister is very lonely. She lives up at Gladstone. She's basically by herself and her husband, but um, I ring her every day. I don't know if um, there can be a communal way we can email people or just keep in touch with people around. Um, I don't have any. I'm just trying to, I'm just struggling to um, not be so lonely myself and uh, not feel sorry for myself and just to try and get out there. And it's not easy all the time, even when you're with with friends or with couples as the girls have been saying you know um if you're single you can feel even lonely when you're with a whole group of people i don't know i'm sure you'll come up with some great ideas thank you thank you thank you okay i think that's everyone there isn't it okay so i want to come to everyone else okay so as i said just some words of support encouragement um, I think Joe, um, Joe, you came in first. I want to go to you first, Joe. <laughs> You're still not unmuted. I wonder if we can do it our end. I see that you're trying to. There you go. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh huh. Well, um, one of the things that I was doing just then was just jotting down what, what people are actually doing and just sort of thinking what great ideas people are already engaged with. But uh, one of the other things was um, the Ubuntu idea that you have faith, and that is, you know, how we are defined by who we're around and taking those risks of being involved is really, really important. But I can't really see everyone else right now. Here we go. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I I really love being alone, but I'm the kind of person that my son says that I grew up in a village, so everywhere I go, I'm always talking to people and I say hello to people or I smile at people. And I do things like keep a gratitude diary about all the things that I 
do that give me pleasure or the people I meet and I just you know write down the people's names I meet and things like that so when I go walking most days I run into people familiar strangers or people I know so I've got so many ways in which um I connect with people and so I feel very fortunate that I can get out and about and I do the work in terms of friendships. I, I've always found that friendships were hard work. Um, I, I write, I send the flowers, I get people together. So I'm one of those people who doesn't wait for my friends to connect with me. I just go, hey, I'm here. Um, how about we all meet at this cafe? Or, hey, I'm here. How about we do mm. something together? And then whoever can come, comes, so that kind of thing. So I've always enjoyed getting people together. And you know, just I just love people. I'm really, really thrilled about Silver Sirens because I've met even more people. Aha. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But I, I guess, too, I'm just, just so content on my own and having little projects and things like that that I... I've always been fortunate with being able to blend having projects and having people. And I've got a partner. I've had the same partner for 50 years. I mean, it's – I can sometimes feel alone with him, but most of the time I just know he's got my back all the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm just so blessed. Uh, one of the things I try and do is count those blessings every day. Just be very aware of how fortunate um, I am for those things. And like all of you, I've, I miss the friends I've lost, but I talk about it. You know, I just, or I, I go and put flowers in the sea and say prayers for them when it's the anniversary or something. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing I do with loss is work out what I'm missing and how I've got to find that in my life. Hmm. so if I lost like the other day I lost my mentor probably 18 years ago now so I've always looked for where else will I get that kind of input you know is it studying some more or that kind of thing or why is it that that person was so important so I look at the qualities and my elder I had an Aboriginal elder who talked about totems like what do they represent? How do you have that? And you, what do you do to have those qualities that you're going to miss because that person who was a reliable giver of those qualities is not there anymore? Yeah, so it's a whole heap of running around and trying to work out what my needs are and how they're being met and just being one of those sunshine girls. <laughs> that's uh, the sort of thing I do so I really appreciate the book club and the yoga and I walk heaps you know I love long walks as you know I did the Camino so uh, and it was really really lovely to do something like that and the most important part of it was not what I saw but who I met and how mm -hmm generous and kind people were to strangers that really restored my faith in human beings and I just will work out where I walk next yeah <laughs> I'm okay. gonna, I want to make sure we get the other two in so our time is up beautiful Joe I can listen to you all day I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna now go to Rowena so I'm gonna put the timer on just so that we can come back to the final bits okay over to you okay Rowena. can someone unmute me I will do that Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Faith. Thank you, Faith. And, and um, I'd, I'd just like to extend a thank you to those women who were brave enough to um, share oops, and expose their um, loneliness in this in the group. That uh, was really quite beautiful. Um, you know, the word intimacy was mentioned in, in one of the shares, and I think that's a really interesting word in this context 
because um, there's a famous authoress, Pia Melody, and she breaks that down to in, to, me, see. And, um, you know, no matter what I do, um, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to find what I'm looking for until I find it in me. I have to get to know me first. And, and, and when I do that, then I discover what it is that I have to give. I discover what it is that um, makes me worth knowing and, and worth being with, you know, and I had to learn all that. I also lost my husband um, 12, well, 12 and a half years ago. Um, but I, I can remember actually moments when I felt lonely in that marriage and he was the love of my life. Um, but I had to learn, I had to learn what was, what was sharing worthy in me. And, and when I, when I do that, the, the better I get at that, um, the more I have to give. And when people around me sense that I have something really wonderful to share, they want to be with me. And so it becomes a different thing. It becomes something different. It's not me looking to get, it's me looking to give. And then suddenly what happens for me, my experience has been, I don't have to go searching for something that makes me not lonely, but I don't have to go searching for that connection that I, that I crave. Um, it comes to find me because people sense, um, people sense when you have something to give. I'm reminded of um, when I um, did some acting and I, I, my previous life, I was a sports teacher and a PE teacher. I don't have any trouble making myself heard. And in this particular play, the, the, the um, director said, Rowena, we can't hear you. And I said, but I'm shouting, of course they can hear me. So they sent me to the voice coach. And the first thing the voice coach said was, no one wants to be shouted at. That's the reason they can't hear you. And, um, and I, it, I think it's a similar thing with this. People, other people aren't drawn to someone who is grasping and looking. Other people are drawn to me when I have something to, to bring to the table. And so getting to know myself was the best thing that ever happened to me. So, um, you know, find out what I'm good at, find out what makes me unique, find out what makes me, um, you know, someone that other people want to be with. And then suddenly I don't feel lonely anymore. It, it's, it's been a really, really useful growing experience for me. So take that for what it's worth. I wish you all love and connection. Thank you. I want to go to you, Cleo, and then we'll come back to our lived experience. So I want to get you, Cleo, please, to watch the time, okay? I'm going to go like this when it's time. <laughs> you have to unmute yourself. Still no unmuting. Yes, you're there unmuting. There we go. Hello, ladies. Yes, every I've related or gotten something from every single person that spoke today. It's been really interesting. And loneliness is a funny one for me because I'm um, I'm a journalist who makes my living from writing, which is a pursuit that really you can only thrive in when you're alone. So being alone or has always had a very positive connotation. And I think another reason, uh, so it's maybe something that I might hide behind sometimes, but uh, the other thing about being alone is when I was growing up, I used to learn, I went to comet school, we used to learn a lot about the lives of the saints. And in that framework, the spiritual pursuit of enlightenment and communion with the divine always seemed to involve retreating from the world. But in my mind, it's got, it's kind of imbued with quite a positive, sacred quality. And yet I did turn out to be a bit of a social gadfly. And I did, you know, really was very moved by the women that spoke of finding them in situations that, um, you know, quite profoundly challenging. And I was at a party, uh, yet, or not a party, a gathering yesterday, and I remember thinking at one point, 
you know, I was social, I was interacting, I was very happy to meet all these new people, but it was couples, 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 you know, and even at one point things got a bit political and I found I was a little bit shocked to hear what people's politics were and, and but I did it, I, I tried to actively really feel within myself that it's absolutely okay to be of this group and then to retreat and to sit in the corner and I started pulling out their books and looking at pictures and things and I realised whether I'm with them or connecting, or you know, with strangers, which can be quite um, interesting, or whether I'm withdrawing, that the the I, I really got a feeling that the essence within myself that was me that was okay was the same either way. Like it didn't matter if yeah. I was in the kids' room flicking through an interesting book on movie musicals or with twenty people outside. And it's taken me a long time to get there. And I think that the the my the danger with me probably is that I do love living yeah. alone, and that yeah. it is. The new normal. I am divorced. My son flew the coop and is living with young boys as he should be. And I'm very comfortable. And my comfort zone is probably also a trap. I do meet people easily. I love talking to strangers, but I go out to the theater alone. I travel alone. I go on cruises alone. I go to the um, restaurants alone. When I, you know, because I do a lot of that sort of thing for work. Um, and, you know, there's also this weird thing where I'll often do honeymoon stories alone. Time, honey. Time? Time honey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I guess my, so it's really interesting to hear how other people navigate with that. I didn't think it was something I was going to relate to, but hearing everyone else has made, yeah, you know, made me look at things a bit differently. So it was really valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Just tell me if you can see, can anyone see the, Shared screen? Yep, that's good. Fantastic. Okay. So we've only got 10 more minutes. I'm just going to go through. So thank you, everyone. We're going to come back. I'm going to come back for the lived experience people to give us a minute, um, any takeaways or any last things they want to add. But just for the just to wind, start to wind up. So we're next. So we are dedicating the whole of February newsletters to be looking at loneliness, exploring people's stories so if any of you women want to share your story in a bit more depth Jodie can do an interview with you where we're going to be sharing lots of um, resources and um, other stories I've just been looking at amazing documentaries and just some really great resources so we're going to be sharing that throughout the month of February and um, we're also um, looking to start a program called Silver Connection so we're looking at the moment um, Jodie and I, I mean I work full-time and Jodie is um our main staff other than me and our cups are we're really full so we're looking for anyone who wants to join us as a volunteer to help us um develop this silver connection program and we'll go into more details of that and um we're having regular community lunches we've got one in the central coast new south wales beautiful cleo has offered her home so we're encouraging women to offer their home once a month and invite other people in if you don't want to offer your home, but there's a group of you that just wants to go to lunch regularly, you live together, brilliant. Just let us know so we can let other women know in your area if they want to come along as well. We're also looking at developing the silver, the body, the silver body system. And that will be that um, people with similar interests in the similar areas will be budded together. Or it could just be, they don't have to be in similar areas. They could just be a check-in person that you check in with once a week. And online events, we've got weekly online events from next week, as everyone talked about the um, yoga, the um, book clubs, the master classes. There's a lot of things. If you're not a member of the Silver Sirens Virtual Century, please join. If you're not a member, if you don't want to join, you can still come along. It's just a, it's just a normal fee. Okay, so there's that. So our creating opportunities to connect, just talked about the Central Coast Lunch. If you want to host a lunch, please let me know. You've got my email address in the newsletter, Central Coast, and then we've got Perth on Saturday the 24th. Jodie will be hosting the one. Okay. So, again, if you're not a member of the Sanctuary, this is where you can join. So it, it is a paid membership. You can continue to get all our resources for free, as you do every week. But if you want to get to all the workshops and stuff, um. For free, there is a monthly, there's a monthly annual or lifetime fee. Okay, and that allows you access to all the events, um, all the 
discounted in-person events. You get a 30-minute onboarding session with me. I think that's, I think Suzanne, you're booked in for next one on Thursday. So anyone else who wants to join and jump on, or if you're already a member, you haven't done the onboarding, jump on with me. We do have a social site, because I don't like going on Facebook, but we do have a social site within the membership that you can communicate. We, we haven't done very much with that, but it is set up. So as part of the onboarding session, we can start to set everyone up to, to use that social um, platform if they don't want to be on Facebook. Okay. And part of your monthly, sorry, part of your annual and um, lifetime membership as well, you get a 20-minute aging well session with me. Okay. So there's a um, discount code if you're over 70. <laughs> there's a discount code, which are our elders are treasures and they are so Okay, so we want to keep in touch with us. Like I said, most of you get the newsletter. We've got our Facebook group, got our Instagram, and of course, you can join the virtual sanctuary. Okay, so I'm going to just go around now to, I will share um, some resources in the follow up email and happy to share the slides as well so you can kind of look through it again. But if you feel like you, especially the people with lived experience, if you feel like you have the time, you have the inclination, and you want to join Jody and I and this exploration of developing the program, please feel free to, you know, reach out to us. Okay. So let me go back to everyone. Sharon, I'm going to go back to Sharon, Cheryl, Diane, and Carrie. And just our last minute words. Let me just get my little timer because I do love my little clock. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. So it's coming up. Let me go one minute. We're just going to do a one minute round. Just in closing, Sharon, over to you. Oh, well, I think that's fantastic. I picked, certainly picked up some great stuff from that. And I think it's about um, looking at that space for me, um, using, utilizing that space of looking at the loneliness as a space of me to be able to be, be creative. Mm. Utilizing that space to be creative. And I think that is probably the key. So thank you so much, ladies. You all had some little gold nuggets in there. It was fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Great. Great. Mm. Thank, you. thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let's go to Diane. Um, no, I don't have much to add. I uh, just want to say thanks very much for organising. It was great to talk and to listen to others and their experience and to hear really good ideas. Thank you so much. And, yes, very much taken on board the Into See Me. Thank you. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Into Me See. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cheryl. Yeah, um, like... Um, colleagues that have gone before me, um, I'd like to echo exactly what everyone has said. It's, I found this very valuable. It's actually the first time I've ever articulated my loneliness mm -hmm. um, to put a, a bit of a context around it. Picked up some wonderful gems today. Into See Me is one of those. Um, I love the expression, I do the work for friendships. Um, I loved that today to hear that. Um, so that's resonating with me. Um, and um, I think somebody mentioned Simone Hinge. Is it Hinge? What was the surname? We need to contact her to be in one of our book clubs. Okay. It is Hinge. It's H-E-N-G. Okay. All right. So, um, there's, yeah, there's been some gems for me to, you know, if I take one of those and work on those after today, yeah, which was unexpected, I'm going to say thank you. And I have to be honest, I don't do a lot with Silver Sirens because I work. So um, I might do something offline just to get a bit more framework around that as well um, as to what resources and possibilities are as well. So that's unexpected. So thank you. Well, feel free to reach out to myself or Jodie and we can just jump on Zoom and go through and you know, answer any questions. All right. Lovely. Some of thank our you. workshops are in the evening as well. Most are in the day, but there are a few that are in the evening. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, is Carrie gone? I can't see Carrie on my grid. Is she gone? 
Well, hi there. I just wanted to say thank you again. Um, ditto about all the girls, the wise words that have been said today. I'm going to try and get a bit of courage and perhaps go to the Central Coast lunch. Don't know when that's on, but I guess I can find out. That's on the 11th of February. The 11th of February. I'll put all that information in the follow-up email. Fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, and just the what the girls have been saying, reminding me about gratitude and getting out there and smiling and getting to know yourself. And yeah, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's any of the women that you resonate with and you would like, you know, me to connect you, is there anyone have any any problems if someone wants to connect with them? Can I pass the info on? We're all good with that. Amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, Anna, over to you. It, I'm just trying to get okay. Um, it's been really good because in just being able to even say the word loneliness has made this ma massive air just com compress. Mm -hmm. And it's it been really exciting to hear all those, like, little, what people do to balance it out. Because then you go, oh, okay, yeah, gratitude. It's such a simple thing. And I know it to be a, a bridge to, to other humans. I'm going to put that back into action. So it's been really good. But it, um, the most exciting thing for me is the buddy. Mm. You know how the, you've come up with that buddy idea? I can see that working because um, now that I'm just about to turn 60, I'm like I, I get I'm getting overwhelmed about going into this third age. Mm. So yeah, that's really exciting. Well, let me know if you want to be part of that buddy, help us to develop that, you know. Like I said, Jojo. Yeah, and I, I do. Also, please reach out. We'll talk about that. That sounds great. Yeah. And Monique put in the chat as well that she liked the buddy idea. So that's great. So just go through the chat really quickly. Yep, great. So Carrie's got love Joe's reminder of gratitude, love the be the one doing going out to others. All of that. So our beautiful elders, Joe and Rowena, are one of our beloved elders. They've both been speakers of past events and both really great mentors of mine. So lovely. Thank you for coming in this space, sharing your wisdom as always. Yes. Okay. So you join late. There's no problem. It's recorded, Louise. So we'll get that to you. I'll send it out to you tomorrow. Okay. So lovely. And thanks for sharing, Sharon. Let's talk about loneliness by Simone. Heng. I want to put that in the resources as well. And I'm going to reach out to her about her doing a, a masterclass or a, um, a book club. Okay. So wonderful. So thank you all for taking your time. As I said, this is just an initial conversation and Jojo and I will go away, listen to this again, and we'll come back. Into, we'll, throughout February, we're going to have resources, but we'll come back with some ideas and maybe do like a follow-up conversation as well. Okay. So watch this space. And that just makes me, I don't know, I just love my community because I really love, this is how we make community. We come together and we share and this is how we make it happen, you know. So I really appreciate you taking your time. So thank you. Last word from Jodie. We haven't heard from Jodie. I'm so sorry. Jodie's in the back end doing stuff. Do you want to do any final words, Jodie? No, it's just been great to hear all your stories and I can't wait if someone's brave enough to let me interview you. <laughs> I would love yeah. that. Yes, <laughs> Please, if you'd like, if Joe, we can interview you for one of our, one of, during February, if all of you want to be interviewed, we can do exactly. multiples. So please reach out to Jodie and let's get your story in the newsletter, okay? I don't bite, I promise. Doesn't bite. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all for joining us. It's wonderful. So we had 54 people registered and we had 20 arrived. So I think there's not bad odds. Pretty good <clears throat> odds. So thank you. And we'll get I'll get the video sent out to everybody. Okay? Let me just stop. I want to stop recording then we can just chat.